construction, golf news, equipment, travel, interviews, course profiles, and more. Your weekly fix of all things golf is about to begin. It's the Flagstick Podcast with your hosts, Jeff Bonner and Scott McLeod. All right, well, welcome everybody to, uh, I'll call it the, the Snow Day Flagstick Podcast. Uh, I am Jeff Bonner. This is Scott McLeod. The Flagstick Podcast is brought to you this week by our, our good buddies at Golf Prince Edward Island. Golf Prince Edward Island is a premier Canadian golf destination boasting the most number of fairways per capita in the country with over 400 fairways closer than you can imagine, top-tier accommodations, and exquisite culinary experiences. It is the easiest golf vacation you will ever book, so get over to golfpei.ca to book those. Um, obviously, uh, as always, we want you to uh, check us out across all of our social media network, uh, Instagram, X, TikTok, and Facebook. Please subscribe on Audible, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We really encourage no, you to subscribe. No, say, no, that, no, hey, no, hey, no, wait, wait, no. wait. We really encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us, click the notification <laughs> bell, make sure you never make a, miss a single episode. <laughs> you got me all tongue tied. I have a routine. There is no Google Podcast now. Yeah. It's off the list there. They're, you know, blah, we're gone. It's gone. So um, okay. I have I, my flow. My flow is disrupted. Sorry. The karma. Sorry. The, the eclipse is going to be starting on Monday, uh, and the karma is coming. And, and, there's, cli- and there's an the, eclipse in my brain right the now. The planets are not aligning. And apparently, Kingston, where you are located, so is the path is in the oh, path of totality. Yes. <laughs> I'm being told like, the path of totality. So you got half a million people coming yeah, to the city of Kingston. Right. Right. To not watch an eclipse so they can be in the path uh, of totality. I, yeah. I, I I highly doubt we're gonna and and you know what I highly doubt we're gonna see half a million but who knows whatever. Well, so. as I said to my wife, where in the world is Kingston going to put a half a million people? If a half a million people drive into Kingston yeah. on the four hundred one, because the path in and out of Kingston, there's a little highways here and there, but essentially that is going to be one major bottleneck on the four hundred one, which is already for the most part a bottleneck most of the time anyway. A yeah. bottleneck on the 401 coming in and out of Kingston. Considering our LaSalle Causeway is closed right now. Well, yeah, because to, there was an issue the there. They had incident. Incident. Yeah. So, so it's already a nightmare here <laughs> right now. What a is happening? Half a million people coming to Kingston. Right. Where are you going to put them? I don't know. But it's Where are they going to eat? I, I Good good question. Not at my house. Um, I had a, a few people reach out. They were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to come down and play golf on monday and i'm like mm, i don't know about that uh and then, no uh, you're not and, and then and then uh you know go for the uh the eclipse action i mean i mean stay home yeah. i'm I, look at i'm not saying that you know, i agree with you half a million there probably isn't going to be that many but that's what they're pre- predicting projecting planning for they're saying a million for niagara falls i'm but it's like really that's worse there's really only two ways in and out of there I, I did see a map. Actually, it was interesting. I saw a map of the U.S. Uh, with the Airbnbs uh, and where they were booked out completely for Monday, and it obviously goes along that path when you go through the states or whatever. So I it's going to be dark. I don't know. Like, big, it doesn't big deal. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, 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 you know, and people will like. I, I'm just and people. I'm just kidding around. I'm just. I know that there that is a a once every. 10 year thing i know that it's not very often that the path of totality i love you know what it's such a cool it's such a cool phrase the path of totality it sounds like it sounds like uh like it sounds like some harry potter movie you should get a yeah exactly you should uh get a boat and just call it the path of totality that i mean doesn't it sound like the coolest name for a boat or or movie or something like the path of totality Oh, I'm sure. Star, I'm starring, sure. starring Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise in the Path of Totality. I don't, what I don't, is the Path of Totality? I get, I know what it is, but it just it sounds so cool. Something tells me. Think, to think of the golf game. swing. The the it, the proper path. The Path of Totality is the position of the golf club as it passes through the hitting area and uh. effectively delivers the club to the face, the back of the ball at exactly the right Path of Totality. Oh boy! Isn't that go... all right? I think we need to move on. Okay. All right. Listen, we uh, um, we just 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm stuck. Okay, hang on. Let me get back on track here. You're probably giddier than I am, and I'm I'm half. Alert. I am. I'm probably you're Talk lacking a lot more sleep, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, and why you're lacking sleep? I'm always lacking sleep, but it's, it's yeah. that's all good. Uh, the front nine, of course, we're going to catch up uh, on uh, the latest news and hot topics. Um, on the back nine, we have a cool little interview. Uh, we have an interview that you did, a one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, former top Canadian golf talent. Uh, Augusta James um, about uh, talk to her about her role as the general manager at the uh, Briar Fox Golf Club down near down near Belleville. And we'll yeah. say down near Belleville. It's Shannonville, Belleville, but Belleville Maryville. seems to be a, Belleville is the one that's easiest for most people to understand where it is. Yeah. Um, so we have that interview in the back nine today, but let's get to the front nine presented by Metcalf Golf Club, a natural setting, a pleasant challenge. Golf season is closer than you think. You don't want to wait to start preparing. I don't care what it looks like outside for the upcoming golf season. Get on the wait list for memberships, leagues, or purchase some game passes and start the season um, saving some money compared to regular green fees. Visit MetcalfGolf.com to shop for those now. Okay, let's get right into the front nine <laughs> and let's find out why Scott is so sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> so sleepy today. Scott was up in the big T O, yeah, um, was. at the uh, at the um, a big Adidas event last night. So let's let's hear what let's Scott let's Scott let's hear what's <laughs> going on what was going on up at the Adidas. Uh, you took the go train. Yeah, I I, I drove into uh, Oshawa. I mean, driving downtown in Toronto right now is you know like always a nightmare. So uh, I just drove up to Oshawa, grabbed the go train in direct to downtown. And they were having the event at uh, Steam Whistle at the Roundhouse. And it was an industry night uh, for a debut for the Adidas Tour 360 uh, shoes and product. So they basically uh, invited a bunch of media friends, pros, all sorts of different people. It, it was nice. I mean, ran into uh, a lot of people, had some great conversations. Uh, obviously, the whole team uh, at Adidas, uh, some people were up from the, from the States, from their team as well. So uh, good chats with them. Uh, Scott Pritchard from PGA Tour, uh, you know, our buddy Kyle from the executive director from Golf Ontario, Lawrence Applebaum from Golf Canada, uh, several agents, lo lots of lots of people. And, and uh, you know, it did get wrapped up. Uh, it started at six, wrapped up by 10 ish, or at least that's when I ejected and uh, got home to Kingston about 1 a.m. Um, yeah. So and you're sounding yeah. like Marge Simpson. Yeah, pretty much. It, it wasn't. Over! It, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't the uh, the nicest drive, which we'll get to in a minute. And talking about the weather, but uh, yeah, just a great event and nice to catch up with a uh, a fair number of pros as well, and and just uh, people that are within our flagstick community. Actually, um, people interact with all the time. Uh, was going back and forth with uh, uh, Chris Basie from uh, Lampton Golf Club about a tweet from the or post the from the other day uh just had something that i'd put up about the historic nature of the golf course and some old photos from the uh the city of toronto archives and and uh so we ended up chatting about that and and a bit and uh again just uh, great to see uh a lot of a lot of industry people and and uh you know not necessarily people you see all the time and this time of year too they're all getting ready for the for the season um so they're usually pretty busy i ran into our good friend andrew donaldson uh former head pro at the marsh so now eight eight year pro at uh rosedale now it's awesome so love it's andrew donaldson love yeah that great guy. great guy so uh nice to catch up with him and again it was just uh it was just a good um a good mix of people nice to see them uh, but yeah, it, it takes a little bit of uh, endurance to get in and out of there and uh, wanted to be back today to, to do this. I could have I could have holed up in a hotel and maybe did this from a hotel this morning, but uh, I preferred to. Or to you could have mailed it in, but you didn't. I didn't. You could have sent me the uh, the midnight text saying, hey, Jeff, any chance we can, can... we push? Yeah, yeah. no. Like no, I've make, done many times. We make it happen. We make it happen. Just get some coffee and some rest and we're all good. We're, we're going to push through. We're here. We're going to get it done. Yeah. Um, I tell you, uh, it, it's hard to... Last week, there was motivation. Last week, it was kind of like this. You know, we, we talked Masters yep. last week. Um, you know, we set that all up. Outside was looking good. The course calendar was was flourishing Popping. so much so it was crashing my freaking website all the time. But it's a good problem and a bad problem to have. 
as yeah. I've said before, is you know, get a lot of traffic. If it's crashing your site, it sucks, but it means you got a lot of traffic. So um, but then <laughs> then things went sideways in a hurry. And the, this forecast was coming. We were going to get a 15 to 20 centimeters of snow. The temperatures were going to drop a little bit. And I'm like laughing about it. Like, ah, I, I, I was Come surprised. I, I was surprised get... how many people, people dismissed it. They really I didn't did. believe. I I I didn't want to believe it. <laughs> I will say this. I did tell the whole family here at yeah. the at the Botter household. Put the cars in the garage. Right. Yeah. And and everybody did. Now I got laughed at because power went out that night Yikes. <laughs> it was out for three and a half hours so of course my oldest son nolan who, who just turned 19 by the way um he uh he wanted to didn't want to hang around in the in the powerless uh house. household so he wanted to go over to a buddy's house that had power to charge stuff up so i said oh that's great <laughs> cars in the garage <laughs> Yeah, good luck getting. It so out. I had to go into the garage, just dis- disconnect the yeah. the thing Dude. to get him out and do manual. So, <laughs> That's anyways, funny. it was kind of funny in that respect. Not so funny yeah. the power, but look at but here. I look outside and it's like, come on, really? Yeah. Now, I know it's going to melt quick. I get yeah. that, but it yeah, could be stuff. a couple of days before it really melts away as the temperatures start to rise. So there's been some course calendar adjusting going on. Very much. A lot of places announced that they were going to be open on Friday. Yep. Which is today. Today. While we record (laughs) this, it is today. And I can guarantee you 100% nobody's open today. No, no, not one bad. I mean, I don't think anybody's opening tomorrow either. No, I, I literally spent the train portion of my trip yesterday making adjustments in the calendar. It was literally messages from GMs, from pros, uh, you know, catching social media posts, basically saying, hey, you know what? We planned to open today, but it looks like it's going to be another day or two. We'll reassess. Maybe we'll try for Sunday. Maybe we'll try for Monday. So a word of caution, anybody that goes up and looks at the 30 plus golf courses that are kind of on that calendar right now, always call ahead. But I mean, no, can, we better call you, ahead. <laughs> you can look out your window. I'm certainly there's uh, that too. Yeah, you can you can do that. It's surprising how many people like literally I was supposed to have a tea time yesterday as well. Uh, there was another event that was happening in southwestern Ontario down near London. And yeah. It was a architect walk with uh, Martin Ebert and Christine Fraser down at Tarandawa. And uh, I was, you know, great that they were going to do it. And they still did the architect walk place, but I, I saw the or, or portion of it. Um, but I saw the photos. Everybody's in big jackets and gloves and stuff. And, and you know, they were supposed to play 18 holes after that. And it was just, you know, I, I told uh, our our media colleague rick young who was helping out organizing and i'm like oh, dude i don't think this is really going to happen I, I don't see me driving all the way to to london to to basically uh you know not play so yeah so it's a, it's unfortunate but uh as you said you know here here we are it's only april 5th uh so we're early we're ahead of the game yeah. as it is i know we had the tease as it was but courses are definitely going to be open earlier than they traditionally have been um and you know by next week as as i was walking last night with uh chris fry who's now the marketing communications director for golf ontario and we were walking to the train and he he basically said it right he said you know what come next week once the weather warms back up and people are back out on the golf course they'll forget this even happened and, and he's he's right. They will. he's right he's he's right he's right you just move on because net when, when things do reopen next week that'll be it like that'll yeah. I, I think we're done with what we've seen today. This is, you know, freaking Fingers nature. Crossed. It happens. It is what it is. But when things do reopen next week, it'll be things will be open for for good, and and that's the way it's going to be moving forward. And you know so. what? It'll be Masters week. People will be fired up. It'll just it's, yeah. it's kind of the perfect synergy more than anything. How can you not get fired up? Yeah, it's good. So um, ah, you were making the rounds this past. You week. know what? I- I'll tell you something. Um, you know, the show is all about conversations. <laughs> I um I'm starting to kind of I'm, I'm starting to kind of get back and things have a lot of things have changed over the last say five years for me and the way that I do things with or every, with business every, everyone in the world. <laughs> well, I mean, you spend a lot of time, you know, of you know looking after looking after um, parents, family members. Yeah. Um, you know, COVID put us in a position where you know we we got into having to drive our kids to to school. 
and pick them up from school and you know you're trying to minimize your contact with people and stuff so i spent i didn't spend a lot of time driving around visiting like i just yeah. it wasn't a comfortable thing for me to do and it wasn't um a time um uh you know a calendar a daytime yeah. calendar it was too it was real yeah. challenge if i wanted to drive up to to hawkesbury to see somebody yeah. or drive up to arm Par to see somebody because i had to drop somebody off and pick somebody up and take somebody here and go to this appointment and this it just got hard so this year sure. things have changed a lot with with my my youngest having his license and driving himself to school every day my oldest is in college he has his own car he's driving himself everywhere to work you know my um my mom's doing well you know family you know there's there's a little bit more as the season starts there's a little bit more flexibility in my schedule yeah. so you know i'm i'm going out and seeing people again and yeah. uh i had a, an opportunity to go out to uh, castleview golf club this are they open today week. <laughs> <What's that? Yeah. laughs> no 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 they're not um no. and um you know i to be. on a regular basis would go and see uh yeah uh, justin and and uh claude at castleview and it was kind of like a beginning of the year thing we always did good chat you know a little advice consulting so on that i used to do and i, I haven't done it in a while i haven't yeah. gone to see them in a while lots of phone conversations and email but no face to face and i had a chance to go out and, and sit down with justin um this week and talk about their marketing and talk about the golf course and all their plans and stuff like that and it just and then you find things out it's just in the in the, in the general conversation of things find out that oh they're uh they're in the currently launching going to get ready to launch a new website um you know they're uh they're just in the processes of of going over uh dotting all the i's and crossing all the t's and making sure that nothing's broken uh, yep. and then they're going to go live with their new site very very shortly um and I, I looked at i saw the new website i liked the, the new look i liked the style uh she asked you know i gave a little bit of advice you know being a bit of a web designer on my end too and what i know can they're building it on a wordpress platform using the elementor and um so i understand that because ours is our website is all wordpress based and it was cool to have that conversation. Well, then I find out that on top of that, they're going to be redoing part of the T line in, in with um, AstroTurf, like with the artificial turf. And I thought that was cool. Currently, I guess there's there's gravel surrounding the mats, and now they're going to redo all that with uh, with the artificial turf, and that's going to be happening, you know, very very soon. Now, obviously, things need yeah. to clear up a little bit, but um, you know, so there's there's that going on, and then you know I. Um, what else did I find out? Yeah, um, I mean, oh, the uh, the um, they're introducing when they do launch a new website, they're introducing a new thing called uh, um, notify, notify, notify which yeah. is uh, a waitlist system for their booking engine, which I thought was just the coolest thing. It's yeah. uh, it's down in the U.S. a lot. Nobody's yeah, doing it around here. Uh, I would, as I said to Justin, I said, well, I said, you may be the first, but you probably won't be the last. No. Um, it's kind of a cool system. So there, you know, just in that conversation that I had, there's three things about one golf course that came out that I said, this is newsworthy information. So we'll probably get some more information from Justin, you know, in the next uh, next week and get some, some stuff about what's going on out there posted up, which also, you know, I should say, we encourage people, you know, all of our golf course uh, owners and operators and managers, not just our marketing partners, but but everybody to let us know what's going on at the golf course. You yeah, know, don't 100%. it doesn't have to. Like, I just talking about web, launching websites, tea time booking engines and range mats like, like yeah. that kind of stuff does not that's not stupid information to me no 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 no, we like that stuff yeah and i think courses tend to sort of forget that's part of their marketing Mm -hmm. i mean they they and and they don't understand that getting that news out is really important and you know i've talked to a number of you know tournaments clubs whatever in the last little while and and again you know you're telling them that you know what they they're talking about is is actually newsworthy and if they need if they need to get some discussion going about their place that's a good place to start now i understand there's not a lot of outlets or a lot of places to you know that will take you that information but we certainly will for yeah. sure um but it it doesn't hurt to knock on that door or at least try uh, and at least too on top of that push it out on your social i mean th- oh, that yeah. is i go back every year because we talk about this when we're going and trying to figure out the calendars and 
it's great. We have a lot of people that reach out to us and they say, Hey, we're doing this or I'll reach out to them. Or I'll monitor their websites or whatever. But this time of year is when I start to see four-year-old posts on social media. I start to see Instagram pages that are not updated. I see websites that are showing, uh, you know, rates for 2022. You have to understand your consumers are going to hear, going to your spots, going to your social media, going to your website, uh, keep that stuff current. I know mm-hmm. it's, I know it's a task. I, I know you got to run your business. I get that, but it's part of running your business. So, um, and if you want to reduce the number of phone calls that you have to handle this time of year, or people phoning in and going, are you open? This are is a open? perfect way open? to do that. Totally. Just, you know, you've got communication tools, make use of them really, really make use of them. And, uh, yeah, don't, don't ignore it and, you know, find somebody on your team, um, that you can assign. And it doesn't have to be one person. They can mm-hmm. be multiple people sharing that. Um, but it is really essential from a communication standpoint uh, and, and for your club, because it also, it also creates a negative impression as well. Big you know, time. Big if somebody time. goes to your website and they see information, you know, you're looking at rates from 2022 and they're looking for what's happening in 2024. They're like, mm, well, if that person doesn't care about their business, why should I care about their business? Yeah. You know? Or are they still in business? You know what I mean? And and I'll tell you this, like, if, you know, I mean, any, any golf course uh, operators or managers, whatnot, listening to, listening to the uh, podcast uh, right now, if you have a website and it's outdated, if you know, it's just not up to snuff and you're concerned about, you know, you really want to have a better website. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't make it a habit of building a lot of websites cause it can be time consuming, but, um, I do it. I, I do build them and I'll build them on a platform that's comfortable for me. And I've built them in GoDaddy. I, I, I can handle that for you. You just let me know. I can, I can help you out, get you a little more modern, a little more current. Um, and, uh, then what you might have now, I've seen a lot of, of old school HTML based looks like they were built in. Netscape Navigator websites that are just so <laughs> ugly and outdated, and they're not giving you and not mobile there. friendly either. Definitely not. So, so uh, reach out if you need some help with that. Okay. Um, the Masters. We had a show all dedicated to updating, uh, uh, you know, people on what's going on with the Masters, who's in the field, who are. Our dark horses, our faves, all that kind of stuff. We talked about the course. We talked about the players. Yeah. Um, now we want to talk about the merchandise. Mm. And uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. No. But, but there, you know, the Masters brings with it not just the event itself uh, and uh, and all the glory that comes with that, but it, it also brings with it the... Um, the special edition. <laughs> the, it's a marketing opportunity um, yeah. like anything else and it brings with it the special edition product yeah. and it's a, and anybody and everybody will take an existing product that they have sure make it green and white and call green it and yellow. a green masters and yellow, or yellow yeah and yellow yeah. and and make it a special edition master special edition put it out there for yeah. the masses to buy now some of these are really really bad yeah um some, of, some them of them are, are really cool good. unique yeah. um we've seen some um we've seen some cool t-shirts on an old website called swing juice hmm. uh that had some cool t-shirts that were you know and it's, it, style and it's, and, yeah it's pretty common now there's yeah. a lot of those um you know as far as the the t-shirt world the hat world and so forth right, i mean but it's the shoes it's the clothing yeah it's the golf clubs it's it's uh, it's the ones that are not um one they're not taking the risk what we see with the shirts and stuff like that we see a lot of people that are maybe just a um, little secondary to the industry mm-hmm. and they maybe don't realize they're risking violating the masters, um, you know, trademarks, which you do not want to do, believe me. No. Um, but a lot of very high powerful lawyers involved in that golf club. People are really shocked when all of a sudden they, they get letters for their name, their logos or whatever. I mean, I see every year, you know, 15 other people put a, a, a logo of whatever they are with a flag in it, like the master's logo or whatever. And, you know, if they're of a certain visibility, they're they're shocked, unfortunately, when they all of a sudden get a, a letter. But yeah, you, you see, uh, you know, golf clubs, Cobra Puma, you know, has a special edition driver with azaleas on it. Um, 
I think a lot of people maybe buy those and kind of put it on the wall. Um, but shoes has become super popular. We're seeing mm -hmm. lots of variations within shoes. Um, we're seeing special edition bags. Again, it, it, it just has normally those colors. But um, I mean, I have some stuff you know but I, yeah. I don't have a, i don't have a ton um i was lucky to win a masters uh, scotty scheffler masters bag a, a few years back in a raffle or whatever which is probably the the most masters thing that i've got beyond you know some towels and i know you have a nice head cover yeah i do have a nice head cover thank you very much uh a green jacket head cover from dormy workshop um, you know, the stuff that I bought obviously at, at Augusta, whether it's, you know, a bear from mm -hmm. my daughter, which is somewhere behind me that you can't see. Um, but I mean, it's a little blurry it, behind you right now. Yeah. Is it something that you would think of buying if something sort of came across your plate or no, no, but you uh, appreciate it. Though. I mean, I, I do appreciate it. I mean, I saw the, I saw the, um, the special edition Cobra driver. Yeah, uh, I, I thought that was really cool. And yeah, if I well was done. if I was in the market as a collector, mm. where I was into that kind of, you know, I mean, I mean, it a lot takes money, right? So right. if I was in that sort of space, yeah, yeah, I would be all over something like that, or you know, the special edition staff bags that come out for the majors, not just the masters, but the majors. Yeah. Um, I'd be all over, you know, investing five or six hundred bucks or more in something like that. Um, if, if it was a cool thing, um, yeah. but I'm not, not really, not for me. Uh, you know, I've got other things to spend my money on. Sure. Um, you know, maybe if yeah. I go to the masters, yeah, that's I would a probably load day. up on some yeah. authentic, yes. um, masters, uh, gear, Merch. Yeah. but you know, to uh, order I mean, something uh, online. Yeah. Obviously, you know, the stuff does well because, you know, enough people do it and companies are repeatedly doing it. Uh, in a lot of cases, sometimes it's product just for um, the tour players and then mm -hmm. I'll carry over to retail. I think of the uh, Asics shoes, for an example, that, you know, they're doing for Hideki Matsuyama. Um, but again, they'll do a limited run of that. And again, it's a limited run. So um, it, it, again, it's, it's communications, it's, it's getting eyeballs, you know, for a few times a year to, to get a little extra tractor. I mean, remember, remember back in the day, we used to do master's sales when we mm -hmm. had at retail, yeah. um, you know, we, we do a sale at the, the old store that we're involved with that, uh, you know, whoever won the masters and you, you know, you do a special pro promotion based mm -hmm. on the gear that they used. And it's just, it's just a point of conversation more than anything, yeah. but uh, certainly have appreciation for it. And I'm actually curious when some of these companies do come out with some of the stuff of, of, you know, how much thought they put into it. Um, so yeah, as you said, good stuff out there and some other stuff. <laughs> okay, a couple other things we want to get to masters related before we have to, we got about uh, <clears throat> seven or eight minutes before we have to get out for our break, but uh, sure. um, where are you going to watch the masters this year? I mean, some there's watch parties out there. Yeah. Um, you know, where are you going to watch it? Are you going, are you um, going to Accra? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, we haven't even chatted about that yet. Traditionally on Sunday, um, we'll usually watch at uh, Acro Two Temper here in Kingston, a bunch of people together, do Super Bowl party there. But Masters has been the tradition there. Um, during the weekday, yeah, obviously home. I might watch it in the in the in on my sim a little bit. Who knows? Um, Flip flopping might... back and forth between playing and watching. Well, I, I think the, the fun part is that, uh, you know, I could put the Masters on the TV in front of me and then just play golf. I don't, you know, uh, I mean, if I'm fired up and really want to play some golf or whatever, but um, will I watch a lot of it? Yeah, I will. Oh, for 100%, sure. 100%. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm not going to say early in the week or whatever that I'm going to be um, – I'm going to be glued to the TV. I might be leaderboard on the side or, you know, checking the app or whatever. Um, the app's great. If you want to ch uh, check particular things, uh, the nice part is, is that you can go back and, and on the, uh, on the website, you can look at particular shots mm -hmm. all the way through. If you want to catch things, they usually put out a little summation of the round. The video will be out afterwards. Um, I've been going back and looking at some of the, the, uh, the last ones, um, just to look at 2019, I, I had a look yeah. at the uh, 2023 one is up on YouTube as well. So just to kind of rekindle in your brain kind of what happens. So what about you? Home, basement. Yeah. 
Just that's what on, I'll the, be. on yeah. the couch, that's bring kind of normal. Just the snacks, be. and away we go. Yep, I'll have the snacks. So now that I'm uh, very much into the air fryer, there probably will be some very <laughs> nicely uh, some wings, uh, crisp, crispy wings, uh, chicken wings, and nice and uh, some that beverages. And I'll just sit down down the basement and watch uh, Sunday. Now, if Thursday through Saturday, not as much watching. Um, does it, more does it recapping. Depend, I'm just too does busy. It, does it depend if someone is in it? If you're, does that kind of not on you? Sunday, right? It, no. Just whatever you'll just no, watch. Not on, on Sunday. Sunday. I'll I, I watch because I it's the Masters. It's a major. Yeah. I, I don't know why I'm like everyone else that gets sucked into it. Um, I think some other tournaments are are. I mean, I thought the Players Championship was outstanding this year. Yeah, I think the but Masters. It's not are, the Masters. It's just, no, and I, I think the Masters. I mean, I know my mother in law watches the Masters. Yeah, she never, she never played golf in her life. You just, you just get, you just get into it. You just yeah. get into it. So yeah, exactly. anyway, yeah, that'll be me. That'll be me. Um, I'll watch, I'll watch a little bit of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Probably some recap. I'm a night owl, so I'll probably watch a lot of the recap stuff at night on the Golf Channel. Sure. And uh, then I'll watch, uh, I'll watch uh, start to finish on Sunday. Yeah. And then that'll be the uh, that'll be the end of my weekend. <laughs> Sounds so, good. Um, what do we got here? We got about five minutes here now. Um, master I threw up some mass. Yeah, trivia. I threw up some master trivia. Yeah, I threw up some uh, this week. I might still put up some more. I just put up uh, nine little questions. Okay, had some had some people that um, were asking about some trivia stuff for their buddies and doing some things and mm -hmm. the all the usual stuff was just kind of like been overdone so yeah so yeah I remember, yeah first the original the Flagstick. very the original flagstick magazine yep. Yep. uh fe fe cover feature how well do you know the masters yeah trivia by I, scott mcleod but i think a lot of cases uh some of the trivia is just um you know it's the same stuff over and mm -hmm. over again right so yeah. and, and that's fine but uh so i decided to take a little bit of a dig and pop up a few questions so i posted nine up on we our website so if people want to go to flagstick.com uh and check that out but i thought i'd throw one at you and see if you can make a guess <laughs> and, and and we'll go from there so how long is magnolia lane the entrance road to augusta national golf club how long is it yeah again something most people don't think about so no, you gotta remember in what yards, feet, yards. Yeah, we'll yards? do yards. We're, we're golfers. Um, we'll do yards. Hmm. Yeah. See. There's some feet. There's, 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 uh, I'm gonna say that it is uh, 800 yards. Only 330. It looks bigger if you see all the videos of people driving down the lane and so forth. But yeah, it's only 330 yards long. Um, the club was founded in 1934, but it wasn't even paved until 1947. Cool. So just to let you know. So anyways, if, um, you, there know, you, if go. you want, if you want to stump your friends, uh, head over to flagstick.com <laughs> and, uh, we've got a bit of trivia up there and, uh, yeah, maybe you're doing something with a pool or something like that. And, uh, who knows? I might throw up another, uh, another nine before, uh, the tournament starts. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Um, we're going to get out of here and, um, and uh, take a quick break. And then when we come back on the back nine, um, we're going to play the interview that uh, Scott had with Augusta James, uh, former Canadian uh, amateur winner, Epson Tour winner, LPGA Tour member, um, and now the general manager of the Briar Fox uh, Golf Club. We're going to uh, do play that interview with her and uh, wrap up the show. But uh, we got to get out before we come back. So uh, you're listening to the Flagstick Podcast with Jeff Bonner and Scott McLeod. Stay there. We'll be right back. When you golf on Prince Edward Island, there are over 400 fairways closer than you can imagine. Not to mention countless miles of pristine beaches and a rich world-class culinary experience. So get here fast, then take it slow and play around on island time. Golf Prince Edward Island. All right, well, welcome back to the Flagstick Podcast. Um, getting right into our back nine, and our back nine is presented by uh, Celtic Golf Center. Celtic Golf Center is located in uh, Kempville, 20 minutes just uh, just south of Ottawa. Uh, Celtic Golf Center is a premier, premier uh, indoor golf facility featuring state-of-the-art track band simulators and new unicorn sims 
uh, featuring GS Pro. And you can play up to 10,000 different golf courses, including um, Georgia National and uh, TPC Sodgrass. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, getting a little Azalea golf in or uh, hitting to some island greens, Celtic Golf Center has exactly what you need. You can work on your game, play with friends, play special games, uh, get swing analysis uh, all uh, on the screen right in front of you. So uh, check it out at CelticGolfCenter.com. Masters, uh, the Masters are coming, <clears throat> but they're not here yet. They're not here yet. So we got some other things to uh, that we can talk about besides the Masters for a bit. Um, how, about somebody, how about somebody named Augusta? Exactly. I was just, it, just <laughs> messed my, there's a bridge. There's a bridge. There's a process here. And I was just, uh, okay. All right. Well, we uh, we have known this uh, this young lady. Call her young yeah. lady. She's still a young lady. I, they're she's, most people are young ladies compared to me. She's um, thirty now. But this young lady, I've known her for a very, very, very long time. Her father yeah. is Jeff James, the uh, director of golf, head professional at Loyalist Golf and Country Club down in the Kingston area. Um, and uh, Augusta James, uh, you had a chance to sit down with Augusta, do a little one on one discussion. And see where she's at. Um, Augusta is a former Canadian amateur winner. Mm -hmm. uh, she is an Epson Tour winner. She is mm -hmm. uh, a former member of their current member of the LPGA Tour. I think. No, no she's yeah. not a current member. Okay. Um, she's Re a former member. Reinstated amateur. Reinstated amateur now. Okay. So she's a former member of the LPGA Tour and now works in the golf industry as a general manager at the Briar Fox Golf Club down near uh, Belleville, Shannonville, Marionville, whatever one uh, is. Most, yep. uh, excuse me, Marionville. Marionville's up the road from me. Ah, that's why. Um, you know, things in the brain. Um, but you had a chance to sit and talk to her about the transition from, you know, being a professional golfer to now a GM, the opportunities, the challenges, uh, you know, different things. But um we got that interview here. Is there anything uh, like, do you want to set this up anyway? Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing here is that, you know, obviously we, we introduce, uh, you know, uh, Augusta to people that maybe don't know her and, and yes, happy birthday, Augusta. Her birthday is coming up. That's there why she, ended, that's why she ended up with the name Augusta because it happened during that week. Um, but I think one of the things that attracted me to do the interview with her was not only talk about that transition, um, but about, the creativity and the things that they're having to do she's she's gone into this role at a time where she you know she's got a lot of experience in the industry but she's jumped into the gm side of things kind of post covid and yeah. so it's a different time in the industry and as a result of it um it's recognizing what are the opportunities what are the challenges and what are the creative ways to look to the future which i think is one of the fun things that we'll get to in the interview which i think people should note there was a, a very unique program which drew me to you know make sure i got a hold of augusta and said hey let, let's talk about this program and why it's important and what it means to the industry so uh we'll just leave it at that and you can you can hear about it all in the interview all right. Well, then, uh, without further ado, let's get to uh, this interview uh, with um, our very own Scott McLeod with uh, Augusta James of the uh, Briar Fox Golf Club. Take a listen. All right. Scott McLeod here back with the Flagstick Podcast. Got a special guest today, somebody I've known for quite some time. In fact, I think she was probably 12 or 13 years old when I first met her. I don't know if that ages you, Augusta, or not, but uh, <laughs> that ages me for sure. Uh, Augusta James, the general manager at the Briar Fox Golf Club in Marysville, Ontario. Uh, how are you doing today? Yeah, great. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always good to catch up. Uh, to give people a little bit of history and background, if they're not familiar with you, um, grew up in a golf family, uh, was a fine junior player, obviously uh, as an amateur, went on to win the Canadian Amateur, uh, had a nice career at NC State, uh, turned professional, um, Pinnacled, I guess, by winning on the Epson Tour, which is pretty impressive, but uh, derailed by injuries, unfortunately, uh, which took you out of the game for a little bit. We're happy to say that you're back in the game again, and, and you uh, have won an Ontario Mid-Amateur Championship in the last little while, which is impressive. But, uh, you know, besides that, you decided to go into the industry, which uh, we know that, you know, your dad and your brother are in the industry. Uh, you made that decision to kind of go into it. Was it always something on your mind that maybe after your playing career, it was something you'd do? 
Yeah, I think that uh, anybody who's in golf would would keep it as a as an option for themselves after they're done playing. So I certainly did. Um, but I was enjoying myself in other industries. I, I worked in the construction industry and then in digital marketing. Um, but when the, the opportunity came up at Briar Fox, it seemed like a no brainer and, and it has clicked really well. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, some of those other things that you did, though, were probably, you know, probably are helpful now as far as skills that you have in, in going into the business that you are. Has that been the case? Certainly. Yeah, you can take anything from any job and, and apply it to what you're doing now. So that has definitely helped. Um, and it was nice just to get back into that workforce routine. You get a little bit of that in college, but we're so golf focused uh, at school and then it's all golf all the time after school. So to to uh, you know, even draft emails and uh, documents, I learned a lot about uh, drafting different documents and stuff through those industries that have applied here now. And as I mentioned, you know, you've you've continued to to play the game and kind of, you know, get back into it a little bit. Has that been important for you once you regained your amateur status to, to kind of have that in your life still? Um, truthfully, yeah, it's been it's been more important just in the personal life. Uh, when I met my husband, he played golf once or twice a year. Now he plays twice a week. I don't even Ooh. sniff that. Um, <laughs> I'm lucky if I get out there 10 times a year. So um, it's nice to be able to go and play, though, a scramble with him. Uh, or we go and play a uh, scramble with his father every year. So things like that have been really fun. And then, yeah, playing the Canadian Mid-Am and playing the Ontario Mid-Am, uh, it definitely has given me a little bit of an itch, even though I'm frustrated I can't practice a lot. Uh, it's given me a niche to want to go and play and win those events. So, well, I mean, I'm glad that you, you know, you are back uh, and playing as little as it is, uh, as you know, you know, the golf industry can be really challenging from a time perspective. Again, I mentioned that as far as, you know, your dad and your brother being golf professionals, you know, you see the dedication that goes into it. Um, the lack of personal time sometimes. So if you got to make a choice between, you know, being on the golf course or not, sometimes it's off the golf course. So um, why don't you talk a little bit, uh, you know, in taking this job and taking this role at, at Briar Fox, um, you're at a golf course that, uh, you know, while I was making a transition in, in ownership uh, at a time when, you know, the industry was kind of going a little bit crazy uh, as far as, you know, a lot of new golfers and things like that. Were there particular challenges that you saw coming into that role that uh, were maybe different or did it not seem different to you because you really, you know, hadn't been in that role before? Yeah, I think because I hadn't been in that role before, I didn't see um, challenges on the day to day aspect that I think other golf professionals, uh, when I say head professionals, GMs would have seen in their in their roles. So it was just a great opportunity for me to jump in when, like you say, the golf industry was really booming. We've seen huge success over the last three years. And and as you know, we're still seeing that now, even still in the trickle down. So um, it's nice to see golf trending up. It made my job and transition easier in the sense that people wanted to be here. Uh, but certainly it was a busy, busy few years uh, versus if I had come into the industry 10 or 15 ago. Yeah. And, and even though, you know, it's nice, obviously, to have a big demand, it still provides a lot of challenges. I think people sort of forget that outside of the industry, they look at it, they see a lot of new golfers coming in, but they have to realize that that also presents challenges as well, right? Yeah, certainly. Um, so for you, I mean, uh, even though that, you know, uh, you know, golf is on the up, you know, it's not a case of having every single tee time full all the time. You know, you've still got to be proactive, uh, looking ahead, looking towards the future of the game. I know for you, being someone who grew up as a junior in the game, you realize the importance of, you know, juniors and, and going into the future. Has that been a, a big, uh, you know, aspect for you with your team? Absolutely. I'm lucky that I have a good team here. Uh, they're willing to jump in on any kind of random idea that I have throughout the year, which is great. Uh, junior golf is is super important to me. It's super important to the staff here. We do have limited um, practice facilities, which, as you know, can be challenging when you're just trying to do intro days for junior golf or big groups for junior. Uh, but we, we do try and provide whatever we can. So we partner with the school across the road um, and bring them over for a gym class. Uh, we have a partnership going on with... Um, with the uh, Mohawks of the Bay of Quinney with their community. So it's all about first tee and getting that up and going this year. And so they've been super awesome with that. And we can just lend a hand and, and lend the golf course. And uh, we also provide junior days on Wednesday nights. So it's because of our limited um, space, it's drop in if you'd like, 
but it's 15 minutes of free instruction or uh, whatever topic you want to chat about rules of golf and stuff and then they can go play with their parents for free so we've enjoyed implementing what we can and and hopefully we can only continue to grow that i mean that's amazing i mean i think uh, every golf course could use that as an example and realizing and understanding that you know while they're busy now we might have empty fairways down the road so you better make sure that you you know plant some seeds right for sure. Exactly. And and I was so fortunate to be a part of big junior programs growing up. And even when maybe the junior program wasn't huge, my parents did a, a good job of doing research and getting me out with other players. So uh, I was lucky that way. And all we can do is hope and pay that forward. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, let's touch on that a little bit. How much did that influence you? You, you know, you came from, you know, very young playing in a, a place at Shelburne that obviously emphasized a lot of juniors. Um, your dad is putting a lot of emphasis at loyalist in supporting juniors, junior tournaments, development, supporting, you know, provincial tournaments and things like that. How has that shaped you and your thoughts about, you know, what you can do at Briar Fox and in the industry as a whole? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's it, I can't be measured honestly. Uh, I think people can say all they want. Junior golf is the future. Junior golf is the future, and they want to support it. But unfortunately, you have to put the time in. And it is one of those things where if you're not willing to put the time in, if you're not willing to put the often free and volunteer man hours in, and your staff isn't willing to, then you're not going to have any success with it, right? Uh, because there's so many people that don't want to sign their kids up for golf and pay a ton of money when, as you know, kids are busy enough and trying a million different sports. So in order to get them out here and test it out and hopefully hook them, we try and provide as many free services as we can. So that's where we try and go with it. I I can't thank everybody enough that I've ever been a part of. And, and you're right, it's shaped me for sure. And, and Kevin Hayne was another one with a huge go golf program for juniors that uh, supported not only the day-to-day -day juniors, but also the elite athlete too. Yeah. And uh, you know, it helps as well to have ownership that's supportive as well. And other members too, people have to realize and understand, you know, staff are really important, but there has to be that acceptance by the other golfers at the club. Obviously, the, as I mentioned, the ownership, anybody that's involved in the operation side of it, that, that's obviously huge. Absolutely. Um, I just don't really believe in, and it's tough because, like you say, the members really have to be behind it. I just don't really believe in limiting uh, when juniors can play on golf courses and things like that because it doesn't teach them a lot of the etiquette of the game if they're not out there when people are out there. Uh, so if you only let juniors go out, say, after 3 o'clock or something, of course it helps your tee sheet be a little bit quicker, but they don't really learn a lot of those valuable lessons. And so we've been really lucky here. We don't have those junior restrictions, and the members have been great. If they see something going on with the juniors, they speak up. Otherwise, they're really happy to see them out there. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, you've got to build that culture, which I think a lot of people don't really think about sometimes. Although it is a business, there is a culture that has to be built. And, you know, that takes time to be able to do that and effort, as you said. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I, I noted of late, you know, I always keep track of uh, a lot of the golfers that maybe, uh, you know, covered in the past and, you know, people that have gone into the industry and so forth. And, you know, I noted a program that, you know, you guys have decided to do there, which I'd never seen before. And, and frankly, I mentioned it to a, a lot of people since then, and they're saying, wow, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, it seems like a simple thing, but the creativity of providing passes to your golf course and having them available for uh people to you know to get through the library a local library how did that come about and why don't you give us the sort of the the story behind that yeah i wish i could take credit for it and uh i i can't really because it's it's the library the library uh the local library here is is always pushing forward with things like that and so last year they had um, passes for some of the parks, some of the local parks, uh, Quinty Conservation, I think, and, and a few other spots. And it was that similar age group, uh, so young adults, um, which is, as we were just talking about, junior golf, kind of at the top of our threshold, but still an important demographic for purchasing memberships or, or playing for the next 30 years. Um, so when she approached me and said that she does this with other organizations, um, it was kind of a no-brainer. It's two passes. It's not like it can be abused. Uh, it supports the library, which is local, which I love doing. And uh, I feel like it cross-promotes between the two organizations, even though uh, the library is a not-for-profit. 
Um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of a no brainer that way. I just didn't see a lot of downside. And I know that, like you say, it is a business, but if you're going to have something that's complimentary, make it for young adults, make it for kids so that they can see if they like the game. And, and what was your first thought when they approached you and, and what did you think of the concept? Did it, did it sort of, uh, you know, click in your brain that this is really great or was it something you had to think about or did you think, wow, why did nobody do this before? Yeah, I definitely did a little bit of research only because uh, it was something, like you say, I've never seen it anywhere before. I've never heard of it. Um, but as soon as I dug a little bit into it, definitely a no brainer. I would encourage, I, I did, I called my dad, I called my brother. I've been telling people about it because uh, it's, it's an easy partnership. It's easy to cross promote uh, two great organizations. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's, let's sort of lay out how it works. As you mentioned, there's two passes available at the local library. You can mention the, obviously the library name and so forth, but um, how, how does it work and, and uh, what does it involve? Yeah. So it's uh, currently the only one we're doing it with is the Tynega Township Library. Um, and it's two passes for the age group of 19 to 24. So it's young adults. Um, the guidelines from the library. So the ownership really is a lot on the library. We just train our staff in-house to recognize the uh, the discount pass. Um, so the patron would be a member of the library. They would own the library card and uh, they could come in and borrow that pass for three days and uh, they can come out and use it. Um, it's just a walking only pass uh so if they wanted to purchase a card or something like that they could on top uh but the loan period is three days and the main reason that uh, that target demographic for this year is uh, they find at the library that they lose that age group a lot for school you know they're only reading for school or they're only participating in library stuff because they have to so it was a way to get that um age group back into the library for uh more personal reasons or or uh, fun light reading sure and, yeah and uh i i do find and i there was a study not that long ago that it's actually a little younger than this but especially in women that there's a huge drop off in sports and athletics because of the same thing right they're focusing on school they're go, trying to get through their high school teenage years so uh i thought it was a great way to try and bring a few people out we, we do see that as being one of our lower used membership types here too yeah and and uh yeah as you said 19 to 24 is a critical time for a lot of people they're they're moving on to other things they might be busy with you know college university just getting their career started so anyways i guess to tie them to the library tie them to the golf course you know gives them that that affiliation and you know it can foster something later on from a membership standpoint um has being part of that program you know, started you to think maybe about the creativity of other programs or other ideas? I, I'm just curious about that. I don't know whether it has or it hasn't, but did it did it sort of blossom that, you know, maybe there's a different way to think about some things that you do in the golf business? Certainly. Um, I think that it started, it kind of came about at the end of last year. Uh, and so that's why we're promoting it heavily this year is because I didn't feel like it was in place early enough last year. And uh, then therefore it wasn't promoted and utilized as it could have been. So at the end of last year, it took us, it, we, it, it allowed us to sit down over the off season and see where else we were kind of having some gaps. And that's how the first T programming and partnering with the recreation center on the Tainaga territory, uh, came about. And so that opened our eyes to a few more opportunities for sure. That way, things yeah. that I never saw when I was a kid at golf courses, but are just as valuable. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that, you know, we look at in the industry where we're very much an industry that, you know, we, we've done it this way. That's that's sort of what's happened. You know, we look to historic ways of of programming and and doing business. But uh, we recognize now that the consumer is different than before. We have to attract them in different ways. So, you know, reshaping that and, and is important. Um, have you been able to interact maybe with some other uh, GMs, other people in the industry to start thinking about some of that? Because again, I know you're pretty proactive as far as that age group in that category. Has it that been something you've been doing networking that way? Yeah, I've been pretty lucky that uh, the general managers in the area are, they're, they're all great guys. Uh, so any questions that I've had, especially as I've transitioned into this position over the last couple of years, 
Uh, they've been met with uh, great responses, whether that's business or, or community programming. So, um, yeah, I haven't pushed this program on anybody too, too hard or anything, but uh, uh, those conversations are definitely happening. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm more just even appreciative that they, they take the time to answer questions that I have as I've been coming into the, the industry. Now, you know, you're coming in the industry, you know, as you said, you're a little bit of a novice on one side, but you've been in the industry for a long time. But you're also coming in the industry, especially from a GM management role that's predominantly male. Has that provided any sort of challenges or insights or things where you thought mm, some things need to change here a little bit? <laughs> um, I think that golf overall is becoming more progressive anyways. Right. We see that right from what people wear to how memberships are shaped, right? Things are changing a lot. As you said, the consumer is different. So we are having to be different. Uh, since I've grown up in the golf industry, though, no, I don't find it to be a challenge. Of course, it is a definitely a male dominated field. Uh, however, I'm lucky, like you said, to have family in the industry and to have other people that I know. And it's amazing how many people that I used to play amateur golf with that I see now at mid-ams and stuff that are back in sport or maybe they're still pros, so I don't see them at those golf tournaments, but I see them on social media and LinkedIn and stuff. And we can communicate about how they're doing as teaching pros or or head pros. Awesome. That's amazing. Uh, one last thing. Your uh, NC State Wolfpack are doing pretty well in the uh, basketball. Yeah. Are you watching? Yes. Yeah, we've been watching. It's, uh, it's pretty unbelievable. I cannot believe uh, the run that they're taking. I wouldn't even imagine what it's like to be down in Raleigh right now. It'd be a pretty heck of a time. Yeah, I, I, that game the other day with uh, NC State and Duke, uh, I think everybody would have been going nuts, I'm sure. So Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I've been able to uh, follow it a lot on social media as well. It's It's been pretty crazy in Raleigh. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. I, I think it's amazing uh, what you're doing there. Uh, continue to do that. And uh, if you've got other ideas and innovative programs love to hear about them anytime so good luck and have a, a great season thanks so much scott have a good one all right well um what a um really really solid interview she she uh yeah. she really is uh quite polished as a uh yeah, being it's, interviewed it's, as they say. it's uh seasoned professional i would say um yeah, it, it's kind of neat to see because i mentioned in the interview you know known known augusta since uh she was 13 mm -hmm. and, and watching her play and to see her go through the years obviously did lots of interviews with her as a player uh you know uh, college athlete as a pro i can remember you know having a phone call with her after that epson tour win um and now to see her kind of uh, you know, blossoming in the industry. And like you said, have that polished sort of interview skills, which really, you know, as she said, it's, it's a lot of the things that have come before that have helped her in the role that she has Big now. Time. And yeah, it's even those, you know, the, the dealing with the media and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it was fun, fun to catch up. And as you heard, there some very creative programs and you know they're looking ahead to the future uh rather than just dealing with the present which uh you know is fantastic and uh yeah good good future there for the briar fox golf club and the whole team yeah no and it, and it is it is interesting to note uh you know some of the things that she talked about and and the creative side of managing a golf club um that's the kind of thing that more of our golf club uh owners and and managers and 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 partners need to take a look at is is it it's a time to get creative yeah do something um, you have different. no choice you cannot do you cannot do the status quo you cannot do what you've always done we know that there's an expression that if you always do what you've always done you'll always get what you've always got and that expression is is true in so many ways yeah and uh you know it applies to it applies to everything but it applies a lot to, to golf course operation and, and that you've got to find ways of doing things differently to attract clientele, uh, to generate revenue, whatever the case may be. I mean, we've been no different. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we had, we've had to come up with different ways of doing things, different things to introduce, uh, to produce, um, as not only sources of content, but sources of revenue as a business to, to stay, yep. 
relevant and operational. I mean, you just and, can't do what you've always been doing. No, and the uh, you know the audience changes as she you know as she made reference to in there. Um, there's also gaps in the audience, and and it's trying to go okay. How do we how do we deal with that instead of just putting our head in the sand and hoping that it changes? Let's let's do something about it. Uh, and sometimes you have to go outside of the industry as far as your thought process. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not looking at you know the same stuff that somebody else is doing at some other golf course, which, you know, some of that stuff will work. Some of that stuff is fine. Um, it's worked quite well, mm-hmm. but it's supplementing with other things that not only um, draw attention, which is, you know, what happened in this case, but also benefit your business long term. So uh, yeah, great for, for sure. great for her to be forward thinking. And uh, it was very interesting too to, you know, obviously talk about the, uh, the, you know, the fact that, you know, from a female general manager, um, you know, we do have some in the, in the region, there's more and more that we're seeing within the industry. Um, and that was a topic that we broached on as, as well. But um, yeah, well spoken. And uh, thanks to Augusta for, for taking the time. There you go. You did done good with uh, Augusta, Jeff. <laughs> There and go. there's a brother involved too. Austin is uh, yep. in He's the a... industry as well, following yep. in his dad's footsteps as well. So you got it. Um, okay. Well, um, on the heels of that interview and uh, our enlightening follow-up to that interview, we now have to wrap up this, this show. Um, of course, the Valero Texas Open going on this weekend uh, for those listening as it's happening. And for those listening after it's already happened, it's probably Augusta week. Yeah, exactly. Masters so, week. Yeah, LPJs get their match play going in Las Vegas. It's a unique uh, little event too. I noticed I was watching. I saw was watching match play, and yeah. I'm like, wait a minute, it's not match play. And then I no. kind of dug a little deeper to find it exactly. It's a kind of a unique format. The way that they have, I think, uh, 36, 36 holes of of stroke play, then a cut, then yeah. another eighteen holes of stroke play. Then Goes they to cut eight. down to eight, and then yeah. they do their their quarterfinal, semifinal, and matches um, on Saturday and Sunday. So uh, um, kind of unique, different. Yeah, um, should be fun to follow. Brooke wasn't doing particularly well when I turned on the TV. So no, um, it, it wasn't it wasn't a good day yesterday. Anyway, but maybe it'll get better. We'll see. Anyway, um, all right. Um, well, that's it. Thanks to our sponsors. Uh, this week, Metcalf Golf Club, Celtic Golf Center, and our presenting sponsor, of course, Golf PEI. Golf in Rhode Island is a premier golf destination boasting over uh, the most number of golf courses per capita in the country with over 400 fairways closer than you think. Top-tier accommodations and exquisite culinary experiences. It is the easiest golf vacation you will ever book. Visit uh, golfpei.ca to do just that. Um, Scotty Mac. Yeah. Um, Golf season's open in PEI, by the way. What's that? Golf season's open in PEI, by the way. Golf yeah. Highlands got open yesterday. More so than here. Um, we <laughs> do hope that everybody has been enjoying hearing and watching and following us on all social media networks, Instagram, X, Facebook, and subscribe on Spotify, Audible, and Apple Podcasts. Do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like us and click the notification bell and make sure you never miss a single episode. Um, get over to flagstick.com for more amazing golf content delivered every single day. And, um, you know, as we, uh, I think Scott's in a hurry to leave because his camera just keeps going on and off, on and off, on and off. That'll be good on the video side of things, little outtakes. Uh, As always, we do appreciate you tuning in. But until next week, I am Jeff Botter. And I'm Scott McLeod. Remember, always go for the stick.